That's right, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking right now. I could totally, totally feel it. You're looking at that dish and you're saying, whoo, that looks amazing. And you know what? It is. And if you look at the recipe, you might see a number of ingredients and a number of steps. But let me tell you, it's actually very simple to put this dish together. And we're going to show you how to do that right now. For me, I really like to cut the cauliflower into quarters. I know you could cut it straight down and actually make more of uh, a round flat steak style, but the problem I have with that is you really only get maybe one or two nice steaks and then the perimeter of the cauliflower starts to fall apart and, and break off and it really just doesn't work that well for me. For our miso marinade, we're starting with two tablespoons yellow miso, one quarter teaspoon cracked black cumin seed, a half a teaspoon of black pepper cracked cracked, two teaspoons of sesame oil, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of maple syrup, one tablespoon rice wine vinegar, two cloves using our micro grater to grate into the marinade, and then we're going to use our cute little whisk to whisk all the ingredients together. Now I have to mention, this is enough marinade to thoroughly cover a small, medium-sized cauliflower. If you have a large head of cauliflower, go ahead and basically add a tablespoon extra of miso and one additional measured spoon of all the other ingredients, which should cover a larger style cauliflower. The marinade is ready, the cauliflower is portioned and ready. Now it's time to take our marinade, get a big scoop with your hand, and we're gonna massage that right onto the cauliflower. We need to get it in between the little florets on the bottom side. We need to smear it all over the top, just covering the entire cauliflower so that when we roast it, the cauliflower is completely flavored with this beautiful miso rub. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. We're gonna put a roughly a teaspoon and a half of oil on that parchment paper. We're gonna make sure we cover the entire surface with the oil. We're gonna place our cauliflower on top of the parchment paper. We're gonna pop it in a preheated oven at 425 degrees. We're gonna roast for roughly 40 to 45 minutes, really depending upon the size of your cauliflower. If they're smaller, it'll maybe be 40 minutes. If they're large, maybe 45, 50. This sauce really packs a punch and it comes down to the first couple steps that separate the sauce from being amazing to being just okay. So we're gonna get it started with three tablespoons of olive oil in a pan set over medium high heat. To that, we're gonna grate a tablespoon of ginger on our microplane grater, of course. We're also gonna grate a tablespoon of garlic. We're gonna to lightly toast those two together. And to that, we're gonna add one and a half tablespoons of curry powder, continuing to toast, continuing to release the oils and the flavors of the curry powder. To that, we're adding one tablespoon of tomato paste. This is the point where we have to stay patient. We have to continue to toast the tomato paste, the spices, the ginger, the garlic, all of it. You have to give it that extra 30 seconds of patience. This is when we're really building the layers. We're building the umami flavor. And to that, we're gonna add an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper to add some heat to the sauce. If you like it spicier, you could bump that up a little bit. And then finally, we're adding our can of coconut milk and we're gonna whisk the coconut, start letting the fat melt. To that, we're adding two tablespoons of soy sauce and our kefir lime leaves, three each. We're gonna bring this up to just about a boil, give a good whisk, and then we're gonna reduce the heat to low and cook for 15 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and add a half a cup of red split lentils. We're gonna add an additional cup of plant milk. We're gonna stir that to combine. We're gonna bring up to just the simmer. We're gonna place the lid on top of our wok and we're gonna cook for 15 minutes over low heat, just until the lentils are very tender. And we're gonna turn off the heat and let the lentils and the sauce sit together. Just before serving, add maybe two to three tablespoons of chopped parsley, or if you're cilantro fans, you could also add cilantro. In our house, Julie and I are not huge cilantro fans, so we just go ahead and add parsley. It adds a nice dash of color and a pop of freshness. Hey, what's up? You see those uh, comments? I did, we had a great question. Oyster mushrooms. Woo, yeah, we have oyster mushrooms coming. I'm so excited. It's gonna have a Spanish Mexican theme to it, so stay tuned for that. Also, it's a great opportunity to remind everybody, like, subscribe, leave comments. It helps YouTube find more people like you that love cooking great, amazing, delicious, fun vegan food. 
like these lentils. Totally amazing today. When prepping our bok choy, I kind of think of it in terms of like the cauliflower as well. I want to start by cutting it in half directly down the stem to keep the bok choy intact. If they're larger bok choys, cut them into quarters. If they're on the smaller side, cutting them in half is absolutely perfect. Lightly drizzle roughly a teaspoon to two teaspoons of sesame oil over the bok choy. Next, we're going to season with our kosher salt. We're going to season about a teaspoon of cracked black cumin. Next, we're going to hit it with the surprise seasoning of this dish, which is about a teaspoon of ground cardamom. The cardamom brings such a bright, vibrant note to the dish. It helps lighten up the entire thing. It makes the bok choy just pop. It's really a nice hint of surprise to the dish. This is my favorite way to cook bok choy. I have a cast iron pan on high heat. We're going to put the bok choy cut side down. We're going to roast it until it starts to turn deep, dark golden brown, maybe even a little charred to it. You're going to get both sides of that, the top and the bottom, and then we're going to transfer it to a sheet pan lined with parchment paper, and it goes in the oven at 425 for roughly 10 to 12 minutes. It's time to make the sunflower chili crunch. It's delicious, and it adds a ton of texture to this dish. We have a hot pan with three tablespoons of olive oil. We're going to grate our garlic on the microplane grater right into the hot pan. It's going to start to toast very quickly. To that, we're going to add our grated ginger. To that, we're gonna add a quarter cup of sunflower seeds. We're gonna to start to saute and toast. To that, we're adding our quarter of a red onion sliced thinly. We're gonna to continue to toast, really caramelize, really start bringing out all the oils. After toasting and cooking over a high heat for roughly three minutes, we're gonna add a quarter cup of chopped scallions and two tablespoons of sesame oil. It brings a real extra layer of nuttiness and richness to our chili crunch. Oh, I forgot to mention, I have a tablespoon, that's right, a tablespoon of red chili flakes. I like it spicy. Once again, you could do half of that or a quarter of that. Favorite part of the whole process is plating the dish. This is where all of our work comes together and we create a plate that represents the flavors, the textures, all of it. So we're gonna start with putting our lentils and the curry sauce on the bottom of the plate. They're perfectly cooked, they're thick, it's creamy. You could smell the aroma already. To that, we're gonna add our bok choy around the perimeter of the plate. They're lightly charred. They have wonderful aromatics from the cardamom. And next, we're gonna put the huge, beautifully roasted cauliflower steak right in the middle of the sauce. To that, we're adding our sunflower crunch full of spice and ginger and garlic and texture. It's amazing. The versatility of this dish is where it's at for me. You could put it on a plate and make it look beautiful and special. You could put it on a platter. You could put all of the steaks on one platter, a huge bowl of the lentils, another platter with the bok choy, and then the sunflower crunch in a small bowl for people to garnish themselves. This dish fits any kind of dinner party you want to throw, family style, plated, it's perfect. Blow your guests away with this recipe. Guaranteed to be a fan favorite. Woo, thank you for sticking with us. Now, you did see how easy this is. There's steps, but it's totally doable. Now you have miso roasted cauliflower in your culinary toolkit. So let's take a minute, like, subscribe, and leave comments. You know the comments help YouTube find more people like you to find us. And also, now that we're building some confidence, I want you to go ahead and make this spicy noodle next. It's amazing, it's straightforward, it's huge flavor. And I'm gonna go full chef mode right now. I expect you to report back to me with results. See you next week.